Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> filmmakers and moviegoers alike, welcome to this week's episode of Crip Casual. I'm your host, Three Cups. Joining me, as always, is the amazing Dorky Dev. What's up, Dev? I'm Vengeance. Mm. I'm Batman. <laughs> Wearing Superman shirt. Yeah. Yeah. Totally fine. <sighs> this was a nice week. This was a great week. <laughs> Steven, I'm so glad we had this week. Mm -hmm. It was fun. Talk about it when we get in there. But anything else you want to talk about before we start talking about what we're going to talk about? I mean, let's just talk about what we're going to talk about. Let's uh -huh. let's fuck it. Let's fucking cuz this show could go on for a while. <laughs> as much can. as I want to be wrapped up by 7, I don't know if we will. <laughs> we'll find out. We'll see. <laughs> Straight up. <laughs> okay. So this week because I'm so amazing at coming up with titles for the show, I've called it the 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 the. Mhm. Mm uh-huh. Oh, wow. Just really pushing our joke to the uh to the edge there. Yeah, exactly. Pushing it to the edge. Like the because uh, what, we're reviewing this week is the Batman uh, from Bat uh, from eighty nine and mm -hmm. the the Batman um, from um, twenty twenty two exactly yeah um so the 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 mm -hmm. the 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 the, the. <laughs> there's five thes in this episode gosh darn it <sighs> <laughs> I'm so clever I, I'm so happy we did this week <laughs> it's fun it was an enjoyable week for sure. You know, I got to do red, don't I? I got to have it in red for today, don't I? Definitely. You should definitely have it in red for today. Oh, yeah, 100%. It's mm -hmm. got to be. Yep. It works. It looks good. All right. So let's get in here. Let's start talking about the first movie for today. Just get it out of the way. I'm just kidding. We're talking about Batman. Batman 89. Which was released June 23rd, 1989, with a budget of $35 million estimated. Opening weekend made forty million dollars. Gross U.S. and Canada two hundred and fifty-one, and worldwide four hundred eleven. Holy shit! Did this fucking make money? Yes, it did. <laughs> Holy <laughs> fuck! <laughs> More than ten <laughs> times its budget. <laughs> fucking damn. <laughs> fuck. <laughs> yeah, you, you hit your goals, boys. Good <laughs> job. God <laughs> damn! <laughs> I didn't realize how much this was a fucking. This made its money back and then some. And it's not shocking, because holy shit, does this actually, like, hold up, like, surprisingly well as a good Batman movie? I, um, I both agree and disagree at the same time. It holds up in the... It, okay, it holds up if you look at it as a Golden Age comics adaptation of Batman. Very campy, fun Batman. Not even campy. But, like, the pre... -cam like, it's pre-campy campy, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Like, the Batman who didn't have the no... Or the no-killing rule, and... A Joker who's a mob boss mm -hmm. before the camp era of the Silver Age, which is what like Adam West Batman is is kind of the adaptation of. This is that the, the Golden Age Batman era adaptation, and it's a really good adaptation if you look at it from that like that kind of sense, like the root of Batman, okay, and what Batman is, and what Joker is, and dude, like Jack Nicholson is so fucking good in this, and. On Marvel Connection of the Day, Michael Keaton, who plays uh, the Vulture in uh, Spider-Man. Okay. Oh. Um, and maybe playing Vulture in Morbius. Who the fuck knows at the multiverse at this point? Uh, is fantastic as Batman. I love his... His Batman still is arguably my favorite Batman. I don't know why. It just is. He's so good in the goddamn role. Like, I just... I love him as Batman. He's he's definitely an interesting Batman for sure. Like my favorite part about this Batman is the no neck movement. That's one. Yeah, the suit my... was a choice. Yeah, the suit was a choice for sure. But what Michael Keaton does with the suit is totally fine. Um, oh yeah. But I I think about and what... the voice. I like his voice. His voice. His was... Batman voice. Yeah, absolutely. But you think about what he does in this movie. Like if you think about it from like this is really just extreme nitpicking. I do like this movie. It's fun. It's an enjoyable little romp to watch. It's dated for sure, but it's yeah. it's still silly goofy silly goofy movie that you can watch and enjoy. And um but you think about what he does in the very beginning of the movie, he just watches this family get mugged uh and then doesn't even do anything to the criminals and then um 
later on he gets shot pretends to be dead and then gets back up no he does that with the muggers but still then he does it again later on and then he does that again later on and then he does that again later on <laughs> thank god that suit's bulletproof exactly thank god like, that a uh, silver tray was too <laughs> yeah listen i'm not arguing some of that i still fucking love this mm -hmm. Like, dude, I grew up watching this, like, at least once a year. This is another one of those ones that d defined Dev, okay? We, we keep hitting these movies that help define who I am as a person, like, <laughs> from a media set. Okay. This is one of those movies, okay? Like, straight up. Because I watched it so goddamn much. Because it, it, it's arguably what got me into superheroes. Because I probably saw this before I saw any of the X... I've, I saw this before, definitively before I saw any X-Men. Mm -hmm. Probably saw this before I watched any of the animated series that I love. Like, this is what defined superheroes for me. And it's, like, in my opinion, it still holds up in the sense of, like, this is a adaptation of late 80s, early 90s of what comic book movies are. And this redefined what a comic book movie could be. Mm -hmm. Mind you, the rest of the series that this ends up becoming nearly kills comic book movies. Look at you, Batman and Robin and Batman forever. Um, but like this movie saved comic book movies because before this, everyone's like, this is just campy bullshit. And sure, this has some campy bullshit, mm -hmm. but holy shit, is that opening scene like shot from a horror perspective when Batman's like holding the dude by the rope? Like, <laughs> you're, you're kind of like, shit, man, that's kind of intimidating. <laughs> I don't know what I'd do in that situation. <laughs> like, it's shit. fun. It definitely is an entertaining go to go through this movie. And the opening was introduction was interesting, to say the least. He's like, it's interesting to think about this movie, how he's both like, he's newish Batman. He's been doing this for who knows how many years. That's why he's still not really super well known at this point in time. That's why he's still trying to like, tell he's, your he's friends. Probably, this is before, this is before, this is, this is year one Batman. Mm -hmm. It's just a little, it's not, I'll, I, I will say, it's not the most comic accurate. <gasps> Commissioner Gordon is Commissioner Gordon already. Um somehow don't know um also the fact that like uh gordon's not really a good cop in this and i've i've always criticized gordon in this set of franchises mm -hmm. he always comes off as incompetent so he, he doesn't really do much of anything and as the series progresses he gets worse mm -hmm. and like that's a real disservice to an arguably like super awesome character because Gordon's great. But hey, we um, had a uh, Harvey Dent played by Billy D. Williams. Dude, I wish we could have saw his Two Face. That would be very interesting. I think it would have been a great Two Face. Yeah, I just, dude, like it's a fun movie. Um, and I I don't know how else to put it. It's it's a movie that like if you if you like comic book movies this one should be one that you will enjoy regardless um that that's how i always put it um and it's just god it was fun to revisit um i just, i'm still so super impressed every time they do that fucking trick with the makeup oh with yeah that, with the when he's not wearing makeup and then he rubs it and then he turns white yeah it's su that's such a good fucking trick Cause as a kid, I had no idea that's how they did it. Mm -hmm. Cause like in some of the scenes, what they did, like essentially added a layer of makeup to his face to make it look like he was covered in makeup, so that when he p put the white makeup on top of it, it looked like he was pulling the makeup off. And it's that's so fucking good. That is that is genius <laughs> levels of just like VFX. Like goddamn, that is fucking awesome. Um. To be able to pull off like a, it, because that's generally a hard trick. You could do that easy to now with computers, but yeah. like that, that is a hard trick before we have like the capabilities we have today. Um, oh man, and like it, this is one of those Tom Burton or Tim Burton mo movies that like I always kind of like it. It makes me go like this is a Tim Burton movie for me because you know I'm not a huge Tim Burton fan. 
I love Tim I'm, Burton I'm, myself. <laughs> there's like I like some of his earlier stuff. The later stuff is what I think of Tim Burton now. Mm -hmm. Which unfortunately is like Alice in Wonderland and Dumbo. Mm -hmm. Pretty weird things. And Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. That was his too, right? I think so, yeah. That was a dumb one too. Like, Char the, the, the Tim Burton of today is not the Tim Burton of then. No. Um, so that's, that's, that's how I look at it. And I got to say, Tim Burton is pretty bad at filming like action cinematography. Because the fight scenes in this movie... Or in fight scenes at all, <laughs> but the, it was still like what pow, what bam, comic book swing, woo. <laughs> yes, I can't dis I can't argue with you on that because the, the action isn't the strongest. But I mean, like you know, with, with a suit that you can't turn your fucking head in, like you know, they gotta do what they can. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, I, just uh... one of the scenes that just makes me think how silly this movie is is when Batman breaks into the steel museum that is also a restaurant and points a gun at the Joker, and then it points two separate directions, shoots a harpoon in each direction, and he zip lines from one end of the restaurant to the other. Restaurant museum made of steel. Uh, and Joker's only response is, where does he get these toys? It's like, oh, jeez. It's so silly, but I love it. <laughs> Oh yeah, it's it's so silly, but like, bro. And then the uh, the extendable gun towards the end of the movie—that's ridiculous and overpowered, but underpowered at the same time. Yep. Uh, <laughs> Bob, I love Bob. The uh, the one thing I do gotta say that's very early or like early movie era is freaking the relationship with Figgy. Yeah, yeah, it definitely, like, they have chemistry, but it is a little, like, I'll, we got I drunk like once, other... and then, yeah. uh, then, uh, you felt me up and made, passed me out to steal a roll of film, and then you ignored my calls up until I, until you did the thing, and then we did the thing, and, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, I ain't arguing that. I mean, but I still think like their their interactions together are good. It's just how it's written is kind of dated. Yeah. So there's that. And yeah, just, I just yeah. The one other thing that I don't enjoy is just like I know that Jack Nicholson's a great actor, and this Joker is silly and fun, but it still bugs me that for some reason his out of character name is Jack. Like his his not Joker name is Jack. So it's Jack who plays Jack. And I'm just like, mm, that's just I don't know what it is that bugs me about it. I couldn't tell you, bud. Mm. Silly. Oh, 100%. <laughs> but you know what? I can deal with some silly here and there. Yeah. So, are you ready for your popcorns? Oh, I'm, I'm, so, oh, can we talk about the soundtrack real quick? Sure, Holy shit, absolutely. is the score for this so fucking good? Yeah, we got it. <laughs> like, dude, it's just, the moment, the moment you hear it, you know it's Batman. Mm -hmm. Like, I could hear that anywhere and be like, Batman. <laughs> and, like, they used a little bit of that score for the animated series as well, which just shows how synonymous this score is to Batman. Mm -hmm. And I have to give credit when we get to it that the Batman doesn't use it. You're tr that's true. So, cr credit it was where credit is due, because even, like, fucking uh, Zacky Boy couldn't, um, couldn't resist using the Superman theme at least once. <laughs> I mean, it's so. true. I mean, it's just this song is music when you think about it's Danny Elfman and Prince. Not the same time together, but still. I will say the Prince concert partway through is a little weird. <laughs> it's still like it, I, as an adult, I'm like, huh, that is a little bit of a weird cut mm -hmm. right there. But there's still Not Prince in Gotham and it's now a concert. Yeah. But hey, he took his balloons. That happened. True. Okay, are you ready for the popcorn kernels now? 
Oh, I'm ready for the popcorn kernels. Okay, you've got ten of them. How many are you? I'm giving, giving this seven point five. Ah, so am I. Ah uh ha! -huh. That's not shocking. It's it's no. it's, it's it, like it's a good movie, but like obviously it's dated and like there's definitely improvement to it. But I would have said up until probably Saturday that it was the best Batman movie. Mm -hmm. That was the closest <laughs> to what Batman is. Up until Saturday. Because what happened Saturday, Stephen? I think the Batman came out. No, that's when you watched it, I'm assuming. Yes, because it was released March 4th of 2022. No estimated budget so far, but opening weekend, $134 million, with a gross U.S. and Canada of $155 million, and worldwide, $279 million. And you know what? It has earned every goddamn dollar of it. Because you want to know what I'm going to fucking say, Steven? This is how you do a fucking Batman movie. Because holy shit, did three hours fucking fly for me. As soon as we got done, I'm like, dude, I could go for another round immediately. <laughs> I will literally, if, the, if we get a sequel to this, I will watch this right before going to see it mm -hmm. because it's so this it, it was it was like reading a batman comic or watching the animated series or playing arkham city like it was that engrossing of a batman thing i i don't know how to like not gush about this steven it was so this is what i've wanted you know how i've complained about even like the dark knight mm -hmm. like sure you could argue dark knight might be a better movie but this is the Batman movie. Mm -hmm. It it is definitively what you do with a Batman movie. Every this per okay, my friend who we argue on every DC movie. Like we disagree on all of our takes on DC. Uh -huh. He loves the Snyder cut. I don't like the Snyder cut. He thinks Aquaman sucks. I think Aquaman's all right. He loves Batman v Superman. We know my opinions on Batman v Superman, right? Right. Like we literally disagree on everything dceu everything dc practically because he thinks christian bale's a better batman than michael keaton and he's wrong <laughs> but i heard because i haven't seen him since we both went to see this we haven't we didn't see it together but i was talking to a friend today and he's like yeah uh our friend uh he said it's the best batman movie i'm like finally something common ground both, common ground <laughs> is that this is the batman like, I don't know how else to put it. Everything just worked from score to casting to character writing to mm -hmm. just like moments to shots to just the action was so fucking cool. Mm -hmm. God damn, the Batman and the monologue was fucking perfect. Oh, my God. And I know <laughs> you're going to have your complaints and I'll let you get to them. But I need to gush about this. OK, OK, because it's just. This this is what I wanted for so long for a Batman story, Steven. Like even the animated movies rarely do this good. And like <laughs> there's some it, there's some fantastic animated movies. And like do they like the fact that we get to hear Batman's thoughts mm -hmm. in this movie. I you know when when I heard that it was a thing, I'm like, okay, I understand that that should probably work really well. I didn't realize how well that would actually work as being this like through line that like gets you from uh, point A to part, point B helps you pick it apart what Bruce is thinking during this. Like, Robert Pattinson is fantastic as Bruce and Batman. His Bruce isn't the strongest, but I think it's because of where he is in the story. He's mm -hmm. not supposed to be the Bruce that we know as, like, the the playboy. He's not quite there yet because he's yeah. still deep into Batman. Absolutely. And he hasn't found that ba balance yet. And I kind of love that because, mm -hmm. like, this is still, like, this is still, like, a Batman who's been at it for two years. But he's still he's still fresh at the game. He hasn't had like some of the biggest moments for him, and I just I fucking love this. Mm. I will give you your moment to uh, <laughs> destroy this movie in whatever way you see fit, um, and I will try my best to hold my tongue. Okay, well, I'm gonna be honest with you. I can't really destroy too much. My Holy shit! Do we really agree this much on this? <laughs> like, don't get here. Here's my little rundown here. Um, 
for the time i didn't i walked in this movie knowing very little as possible i didn't even know how long the wrong time for this movie was so for me <laughs> uh, yeah i uh, the day i mistake. show <laughs> yeah i walk it my i'm telling my friend yeah i'm gonna go see the batman movie and then she's like oh enjoy the three hour one time i'm like what <laughs> door shuts behind you yeah exactly <laughs> yeah i was like that can't be right and it was right it was definitely a two hour and 55 minute long film which ultimately i enjoyed uh like there's a lot of things that i loved i loved the music for this movie i loved the cinematography i loved how it was set to with like it's a noir a gritty filmy realistic take where the only real colors that we get are green red and orange and it's so well done i and you, you know, know how they got some of that by the way hmm. um uh mr uh reeves decided that um he what he would do is they would film digital right mm -hmm. as you do nowadays but then they ran that film through actual film from the 70s side, okay and then copied that mm -hmm. back to digital to give it that like gritty old look yeah that noisy film grainy texture yes cool which is so fucking cool mm -hmm. the moment i saw that fact i'm like god damn just matt reeves gets it mm -hmm. just give him any batman project he wants because <laughs> he fucking gets what we want yeah <laughs> it was it was definitely an enjoying thing to watch i liked every single entrance that we get involving batman because it's both ominous and also chilling and like hype inducing like the batmobile that you briefly mentioned for a moment was my oh, favorite segment oh in the gosh. entire movie. <laughs> the moment that engine started, I went, oh, shit. Yeah. Oh, that, shit. That was cool. And they like, definitely I, had, like, the dramatic entrance if, down on that, for sure. <laughs> Straight up. I have, If I have ever wanted a Batmobile, it is this Batmobile. Because I'm a sucker for a good muscle car look. Mm -hmm. And this is a muscle car with a jet engine yeah and like there's something so just juvenile about it that i just love mm. and its noise is so fucking cool like it's the, the moment you hear that fucking engine roar i'm like oh yes mm -hmm. <laughs> <Roar!"> <laughs> like god damn the oh. um, there's only really one thing that i can complain about and it still makes sense within the context of the movie, but I don't like Bruce Wayne. I don't like Robert Pattinson in his version of Bruce Wayne. Like, and I think my main critique about it is he's got the like emo goth kid vibe. Oh, one hundred percent. Yeah. No, I'm not gonna argue that. Yeah, that and is. But I will say, for a modern take on what Bruce could be. Mm-hmm not horribly inaccurate of where he would be if he's like a 20 something in like this time you're not entirely wrong yeah like it makes sense it's but like the small things that bugged me were the fact that one of his eyes was always covered with at least three pieces of hair um yeah yeah or kind of yeah. <laughs> yeah you're Great. thinking about it yeah um <laughs> or the uh the only other thing that i can play like i kind of don't like is him without his clothes on because sure he's a toned individual but when i think of batman i think of more bulky than toned true that's that's a fair point um but i think for me like i i think it works with the bat suit they got because can i just say the bat suit's fucking rad in this i did like the bat suit it was pretty Holy darn cool shit. it was so well designed in this i love that i love that get up Mm -hmm. um i love how like each Seth had like a, j a jangle of like something that he could be used all the armor yeah, plating and made, all that stuff i also i love um that everyone just like because it makes sense because you're you, like if you're shooting at someone you aim for the body mm -hmm. and like i loved the scene in the hallway mm -hmm. because of that yeah that hallway segment oh is my fucking God. my second favorite part of this entire movie <laughs> <laughs> guys if you like the darth vader scene there's one of those. Yeah, because <laughs> it was... You know what I'm talking about? You yeah, know what I'm talking about? It was the same cinematographer. So, like, <laughs> he what just, did you expect? If that's his iconic shot that he just wants to put in movies, 
I'm fine with that because I mm-hmm. won't get tired of seeing a scene where things kind of light up based off of the thing walking through a hallway. Because, <laughs> like, <laughs> it's so fucking cool. Mm-hmm. And just still, all the things that happen, it's... This movie was enjoyable. I liked where it took us. My only... Like, my... Sorry, I had one other complaint. My only other complaint is the relationship that is formed between Selena and... Batman. Ah, it's a little... It's it's the uh, it's the cat and mouse. Yeah. Uh, or the cat and the bat. Like, it's that's, the cat and the bat that kind of was thrown in a little bit. Heavy-handed. A little bit, but at the same time as being me, I'm a sucker for it. Because it, I do... They're fucking, like... I, I gotta say, for me at least, their chemistry was pretty palpable. Oh, yeah. Um, And, like... It was one of those ones where I'm like, oh, damn. Um... I would. I want more of this. I did say see someone make a joke, and I was like, "Oh, that's pretty funny." Uh, was that like, the, <laughs> um, Zoe and um Robert's like chemistry? It, it you know is why people read fanfic. Um, <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> you know what? Fair enough. <laughs> it's, it's a pretty good joke, <laughs> and not inaccurate. <laughs> I'm like. <laughs> You're not wrong, because, <laughs> like, half the time, I'm like, God damn, get a room. <laughs> it doesn't help damn. that she, it definitely helps that she's a pretty attractive lady. She also plays Selena fantastically. I mm-hmm. love, I, she's my favorite Selena Kyle, straight up. Uh, Zoe Kravitz, who also uh, potentially, um, not for sure, but potentially, uh, will be uh, our... Um, will be connected to the MCU depending on how the X-Men work because she played Angel Salvador in X-Men First Class. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, she did voice Mary Jane in Into the Spider-Verse, so we don't know if that's tied in either yet. So you know, maybe she's connected on a, level, a couple levels, you know, like Haley uh, Stanfield would be. Um, because, you know, she played Gwen in the Into the Spider-Verse and, you know, she's uh, Kate Bishop. So, you know, like we could have maybe some people who are going to be uh, multiple characters. I mean, Including, also... you know, like Jeffrey Wright, who uh, played the Watcher in the... Um, the What If series, uh-huh. and, and Andy Serkis, who uh-huh. uh, played um, uh, Claw in uh, Black Panther and in Age of Ultron. I'm trying to see, is there anyone? Oh, there's one more. There's one more. Oh, fuck. Who? Unseen Arkham Prisoner. Was Barry Cohenham in a Marvel production? Yes, he was. What was he in? Look at his look, just eternal. Oh fuck, he's druid. Duh. <laughs> oh, I just watched that like last. I was like, I know there's last... one more in there. <laughs> yeah, eternal. Which okay, without revealing who he is, not bad casting. Yeah, so I would agree with that for sure. I'm interested to see where they go with that. Also, I like that relationship that they sparked right there. I'm like, oh, yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Give me the X movie. <laughs> I can't fucking wait. It's going to be good. Oh, God. It's going to be so fucking good. Like, dude, it just, this movie is so fucking, and the, the just the unraveling of things happening and trying to, like, piece together what's actually the plan and stuff. Like, I loved, like, there, we actually got a detective movie. For Batman! We did. We did. It was good. What? <laughs> that had the action, that had the, uh, you know, the cool car, and had, honestly, Jeffrey Wright, fantastic Gordon. Yes. Like, holy shit. Way to give fucking um, Gary Oldman a run for his fucking money. Like, arguably who I would have thought is my, per- like, my go-to jim gordon Mm -hmm. jeffrey wright might edge him out just because i how much more like in involved in the mist like yeah we got we got they were partners yeah yeah we got the we got the crime solving duo we Mm -hmm. didn't really get that with gary oldman's gordon because like we didn't really get the crime solving batman yeah and like with the gary oldman thing too it's like gary oldman goes to batman to be like i need you to do this thing for me but ultimately he's still like it, it there's not like the whole we're in this together partnership while with with jeffrey Wright here it's they're in this together they're even like he's like punch me so you can get out through this hallway and escape through the God, window that was such a good scene yeah fuck 
And they're like, he's even like, he's even throwing Batman against the wall. Like, you need to focus here. Like, damn, I liked it. It was definitely a good cop oh, story. They were so fucking good. Mm -hmm. They were so good. Also, Colin Farrell as goddamn Cobblepot was yes. fucking like, okay. Cobblepot is this character who, in my opinion, in Batman works in any Batman story because he can literally be thrown in there as being this either being the side character or being the main villain. He's literally because he's because of what he's involved in in Gotham. Like he, mm -hmm. he is the criminal underground half the time. Yeah. So like. My God, do I want more of him? I want him in every movie as that like. Criminal underworld boss that like you kind of go to to get information or beat the shit out of like, goddamn. Way to set up a character that, like, I know is going to be, like, an essential side character for the rest of this series if we get more. Which I think they announced that they're making a sequel. So, they're, they've they made, they have two spinoffs coming off. They have a Penguin show and they have a uh, James Gordon show. Oh, I'm in. I'm in. Let's mm -hmm. go. I'm in for anything in this franchise. Because, in all honesty, just put this Batman in the DCAU. Okay. They're gonna flashpoint us into that where we'll have, that, that have to at this point, please. Yeah. <laughs> the only thing that we need now is their whoever they're gonna have as their Superman. I just gotta figure that out still. Yeah, I mean, cause like, dude, it's such a good Batman. This is, <clears throat> this is the Batman, Batman we wanted. <laughs> this is all I've ever wanted from a Batman story. Like, I don't know how else to put it. Um because like everything's so good. I like this adaptation of the Riddler. Um, I know some people were like, ah, oh, you know, it's just, it's, uh, it's really, I'm like, dude, Paul Dano is actually like, he plays what I, like, honestly, what makes sense as a modern ruler. Like the moment that like the chat popped up on the side in one of those things, I was like, mm. shit, that's not wrong. Cause this character is very egocentric. He's going to want the attention. Of course, he's going to have chat up on the side. Mm. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. He's a fucking He's a fucking twitcher. <laughs> Gotta bring that term back from uh, PAX 2017. Mm. Anyways, no, 2018. Uh, PAX South, let's go, twitchers. Um, anyways, like, dude, it, it, that was such a good choice on that and how they did that. I'm like, God damn it, you're right. That would work. Fuck. And I honestly, my, one of my favorite casting, when I was, which I wasn't expecting, is John Totoro as Carmine Falcone. Holy shit, did John Turturro being in this movie throw me the fuck off? Yeah. I, didn't I didn't even know he was in this movie. <laughs> I didn't expect Falcone and to be played by Turturro, who honestly, what I know, I know he's in a ton of other things. I'm sorry that this is my draw for him and where my brain automatically thinks of him in. Um, and I apologize. And you know what it's going to be since you're going to his IMDb currently, aren't you? I'm looking um, at it here, yes. And you know exactly what my brain immediately thinks of with him, right? Pretty sure I do. It's a fucking Transformers. Yeah. <laughs> unfortunately. I'm sorry, John Turturro. You're a fantastic actor, and you're better than that. But unfortunately, because of the brain rot I have, that is what my brain recognizes you for. <laughs> I'm, I'm directly underneath the monster scrotum. <laughs> yes. Yep. Yep, unfortunately. And then there's yeah, a hate, scar in this movie as well. Sorry. Also, like Anders a Andy Circus, I just I didn't expect to be uh, as Alfred, and you know what? Not bad. It wasn't bad. It's definitely a different dynamic than what we're used to, but it's still pretty good. I liked it. Quite nice. It's just this movie is quite nice. Other than the kind of long runtime, I enjoyed it. I especially also liked that the main antagonist was the Riddler, but he wasn't a major part of the movie you know like he wasn't he was the mystery yes dude and when we get to that point and we still have like 45 minutes left i'm like oh fuck there's still some... like i didn't i didn't check my watch once during this but like my brain went we're not done yet are we <laughs> there's still something else gonna happen mm -hmm. this is this isn't over and my god was that a fuck yeah oh my god dude this is it this is batman like this is batman i'm sorry nothing like this the sequel has a lot to live up to with this i don't ex expect the sequel to top this okay it's got to be very difficult to do so 
because this movie is just so goddamn good. It's a very good start in a very good movie. I like the noir. I like the horror elements. I like the music. It's just good. Dude, the fact we get a scene where Batman doesn't break into a place, he just knocks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is such a Batman thing to do. <laughs> like, you know who I am. I yeah. honestly like the three different approaches. Like, Oh, it was so good. Yeah, same door, three different ways to get in. It was perfect. Rule of threes. Yeah. <laughs> that was, that was how I do rule of threes, bro. That is how you do it. Oh, <laughs> fuck, man. Fuck. Okay, so something I wanted to propose. I meant to do it at the end of the last movie, okay? Uh-oh. So I'm going to give you I'm gonna give you your popcorn. Okay. Okay. What are you rating this movie? This movie is a good movie. It's tough because part of me wants to give it a really high score. Part of me knows that it could... I don't know. I'll give it just to set to not be smited by Dev's Fury. Give it a nine and a half. I can accept that. Exactly. <laughs> I would like I will be dead honest, even if you went under a nine, I would I would be a little hurt. <clears throat> if you went under an eight point five, I would have been insulted. Yeah. <laughs> because I mean, I think we already know what the fuck I'm giving this movie. Yeah, it's obviously a ten <laughs> from Dev. This is this is a fucking <laughs> this is a Dev's ten. Also, the fucking highest score we've had in how fucking long? Months. We haven't had a... This This is a 10. This is a 10, folks. The only movie mm -hmm. that got that before is The Matrix last year. We only had one movie hit a 10, and that was a solid 10 last year. Oh, no, we had two. The other one was Shrek 2. I mean, understandable. It's Shrek 2. <laughs> um, but I'll, t I'll take it, dude. I'll take a 9.5 on this. I, I, I would like a 10 from you, but like I'm not going to force you to it because, like, it understandably with the runtime, I understand that. Mm -hmm. Like it is a it is a long movie. Um, once this is HBO Max, I'm gonna see it a lot. Yeah, this is I'm gonna watch <laughs> I'm, this. A this few is times. gonna yeah, this is gonna be a movie I'm gonna break down. Holy <laughs> shit! Oh god, it's just so fucking good. Okay, so something I need to propose to you. Okay, okay. and this would be going for two lists. Okay. Ooh. Okay. Okay. So. Michael Keaton is supposed to show up in the Flashpoint movie because he was cast in it like, I heard about a long that. time ago. Which means that there's a good chance 89 Batman's in it. Mm hmm Which means that that would technically be DCEU canon. Technically. Technically. So, Steven, I'm going to propose something to you that actually could solve a lot of our issues. We what just... if we get rid of it being our two our two comic book lists being related to being a canonical universe and just do it based off of it being a Marvel and it being a DC movie? That could probably work. Like with the DC movie, that makes the most sense because I don't know if they're even going to try to keep a canonical universe anyways. With, Ma with Marvel... I could see us keeping it as an MCU list. Yes, I could see where, both when, we, when 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 When... Movies end up being canon. We move them in. Mm -hmm. I I can see both. Part of me wanted to add an extra letter in there. Marvel at MECU, the Marvel Extended Cinematic Universe. I could be okay with that, because <clears throat> then we add movies as they show up throughout the franchises. Exactly. Yeah. I could I could be okay with that, and then just making it the DC movie list. Yeah, I could. That works for me, honestly. Um, we will have to go back and see what DC movies we've done. I know we did the Dark Knight trilogy. Done um, Joker. We we did Joker. Um, and we did um. Will we count V for Vendetta? Because that is technically DC. Hmm. Question. Occasionally, I have good good questions, buddy. <laughs> well, we can figure Batman, that out later. Batman, but that. Batman. Dark Knight Trilogy, Joker. Um. Oh, no, that's not what I wanted to do. Did you, sorry, just getting that. Yeah, I see you trying here. At the very least, we should add two more slots in. 
But I mean, we could add the the Batman movies we've done. So I we have done the Dark Knight trilogy, and we have done Joker. Let me pull huh. open the movie posters. We could do that, I guess. I'm fine with doing any others we've done. I, oh, we did Superman. The original. So we can add that on there. Yeah, well, we'd have to do the Nolan trilogy. We'd have to do... Let's see. Batman. We'd have to do the Joker movie. Um... Right. Oh, Catwoman. Batman v Superman. It's already up there. We already did there, yeah. Catwoman, Joker. Let's see. What movie is this? Batman Begins? Dark Knight Trilogy. <sighs> So I would already be on there. So I have three for that, two for this week. Joker, Superman, Catwoman. We haven't done Green Lantern yet, so that's not on there. Honestly, there's not a lot of other DZ movies that I can think of. I'm double checking. Do there I mean we've done a lot of movies. <laughs> oh, yeah, 100%. The... Fantastic so, Four? That's Marvel. That's right, sorry. Took me a second there. I, I was like, I it's already left my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> you can't take that back. <laughs> oh, jeez. Who does Judge Dredd? Is that Dark Horse or? That's Dark Horse, I believe. And then who does Kick Ass? Someone else. Okay. Do rolling. <laughs> Teen Titans go to the movies. <laughs> You're not wrong. We did do that. We did. So I have I have currently the Batman, Batman Catwoman, Batman trilogy, Superman, Joker, and I guess Teen Titans go to the movies. Steven, how does it feel that you're gonna have to put that higher than other movies? <laughs> Uh, I'm not entirely surprised. Okay. Man, DC's got a fucking list of like movies that have stupidly long titles <laughs> on this list. We have, <laughs> we have, <laughs> I love this stupid DC list there. Cause there's like birds of prey and the fantastic emancipation of one Harley Quinn. There's Zack Snyder's the justice league. Batman v Superman, Donna Justice Ultimate Cut, and now Teen Titans Go to the movies are all on this as ridiculously long titles. <laughs> uh, you love and hate it, don't you? I do. There's some good stuff and there's some bad stuff. But now we have to rate one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, a lot of movies. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, I'm going to make a simple one. The Batman goes on top. The Batman. Batman's the Batman's number one. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's. I would say it's better than the Suicide Squad. <laughs> yeah, and that's not a a jab at the Suicide Squad because the Suicide Squad was the best movie in DC at the time. Um, but we also didn't do this as the way we're going to do it going forward until now. So you know, it is what it is. Sorry, DC, you've just been uh, you've been changed. <laughs> um all right um 
Catwoman 2004 is an easy one to rate. Pretty sure um, that's at the bottom. Yeah, okay, I could I could deal with that. Um I could deal with that being at number 20. Um which means Suicide Squad is at 19 cuz nothing's going below that on this list in my opinion. Yeah, probably not. <laughs> 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 like, I maybe didn't like the Joker movie, but it's a far better movie than that. Honestly, none of these movies on the side I would put below Wonder Woman 84. Let's see. Maybe even Zack Snyder's The the Justice League. I would rather watch Superman. I would rather watch Joker. I would rather watch Teen Titans go to the movies rather than just Zack Snyder's Justice League. Okay? Mm. Zack Snyder's Justice League or Teen Titans go to the movies. Steven, you know what the right answer is, right? <laughs> and you, I know you hate it. But Zack Snyder's Justice League was a nice four-hour movie. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a movie. It's a fucking fluff piece. <laughs> I will. Uh... Okay. If you really feel you need to put it above Teen Titans Go to the Movies, I'll allow it, but understand that I don't agree on any level. I kind of feel like I have to. God, you are just, you just, just sucking on that Snyder boot. <laughs> no, it's just hatred for the cartoon movie that is Teen Titans Go. I don't understand your hatred for it. It's honestly quite enjoyable. Okay. Real quick, uh, I think Superman could probably go below Aquaman. Superman, uh, yeah. As much as the the that movie does for superhero movies, like Aquaman's honestly a more enjoyable movie to watch currently. Do I so, want? Do we want to? Are you about to ask me about Movie Man of Steel? <laughs> like moving it lower? We could. Probably because I know how much it bugs you. We could probably move it below Aquaman. Oh, you are. I I will allow this. Okay, that way uh, it's. If you if, if 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 you're going to take Teen Titans under Zack Snyder's, if you give me Man of Steel underneath uh, Aquaman, I can live with that. Choice. Okay, <laughs> that I can live with. Um, can I put it below Superman? <laughs> Man of Steel and Superman. Oh, there's two totally different movies. They really are. One's like Golden Era Superman, and the other is this dumbass uh, piece that like doesn't understand its source material and lets Superman blow up a building behind him. I'm still like all I have to point to is that one fucking scene every time, Steven. You know this, right? Like I that's mean, all see, I have to point to. Man, Batman can have a character story, but Superman can't. He can't learn and develop. <laughs> How is that development? <laughs> he doesn't. If anything, he regresses. He saves people in fucking Smallville, but when it comes to Metropolis, he lets a building blow up <laughs> that he could have easily stopped. My problem with that scene is Superman could have easily stopped the oil tanker. From hitting the building behind him. But he chooses to fly over it. Okay? Mm -hmm. That's my problem with it. There's... Because it's a, it's a very simple Superman thing to do. Is to stop an oil tanker from blowing up a building behind you. Okay? Okay. But he lets it blow up. That's like... this. We see this Superman of the, you know... Of the Christopher Reeves Superman. The, saving people for an entire, like, scene. His first time out. Right? In the costume. I don't know. I'd be more okay with it being a draw, like a, just a tie. <laughs> I can do that as long as I'm going to do this. Just so it could be higher on the list visually. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> sure. I'll allow a tie for 12. <laughs> wow. <laughs> this list is fucked and I love it. It's. I don't know how credible we can be with this list anymore. <laughs> Well, we got things. We got a lot of this stuff in the right places. Come on. <laughs> All right, uh, Joker. You and I disagree on this one on quite a few levels. Mm -hmm. So this one could be the the debate. I was about to say I like it. I do. I like it quite a bit. But I don't know which one I'd be more willing to watch: the Joker or Aquaman. Oh wow! I was. I thought you would put it above Aquaman. Um. 
Like for me, I was going to pretty... fight. I would put it for me. I would have fought for it. You know, under Birds of Prey um, is where I would have drawn my is where my line's drawn. So mm-hmm. wherever you want to put it from there, I'm okay with. Okay. Because for me, like, I like the Joker. I thought it was a great movie. But it's not like a movie that I can watch a hundred times. You know. Like you have Aquaman. Yeah. <laughs> like you legitimately have Aquaman. <laughs> so. I could live with that. But then, see, now with Batman 89. My thing is, I've seen this movie a thousand times. Yeah. So like, <laughs> <laughs> and I know it's false, but I still love it. Batman 89, I don't know if I'd want it above Aquaman. Personally. I could live with it being a 10. I'm fine with it being a 10. All right. That just leaves the Dark Knight trilogy. What a, what a, what a good way to fucking, like, close this out. We have, like, the trilogy. Yeah, with the trilogy here, I guess ultimate, the questions are, which one is your favorite movie out of the three? I mean, I think we could both agree on which one's the best. Which one do you think that is, Dev? Well, it's The Dark Knight Rises. <laughs> yeah. For me, it's literally the way they came out in reverse. Like, I would probably put The Dark Knight Rises at the top, then The Dark Knight, then Batman Begins myself. I think we we just, the only disagreement we have is I think Batman Begins over... Um, over the Dark Knight because of just like I th- well no actually no I agree with you I think I agree with you for me well, the no, ultimate actually no I think never mind I, I I'm kind of misremembering my thought process on this the Dark Knight begin or the Batman Begins I think is my favorite out of it because it's the most Batmany but I can say that like the best movie overall is the Dark Knight as a movie and then the Dark Knight Rises is pretty good for me the ultimate linchpin is the villains in the movies. Like, for the best villain in all these movies is Heath Ledger's Joker. For me. I can't... Okay, so we put... So, what are we going to do? The Dark Knight is the best one? Because that's the Heath Ledger one. Sure. We could do that. And then the next villain for me that I like the most would be Bane in The Dark Knight Rises. And then I would say, like, The Batman Begins because it's Scarecrow. And ultimately, Scarecrow isn't really much of a problem. Well, Ra's al Ghul is the, the main in that one. I mean, yeah, but even then, like, it's a good origin story, but something about it doesn't quite stick out as much. That's fair. Okay, then, if we do it in that order, where do we place them? In that order. So, Dark Knight, Dark Knight Rises, Batman Begins. This is the order we're ranking that. I could see Dark Knight... Top three. Yeah, I was just thinking I I like all of those more than Shazam. You like all of them more than Shazam? I, I think so, honestly. See, this is one of those weird moments on this list where our negotiating has hit me because I personally like Birds of Prey more than Wonder Woman and Shazam. Okay. But I know you like those two more mm-hmm. than Birds of Prey. Yeah, I kind of do. But, like, Birds of Prey is a movie that I really enjoy um, because it's, it like, it does, you know, the Harley Quinn stuff really well, in my opinion. Um, <sighs> okay. By default, we'll put The Dark Knight in Third. number three. Okay. Yeah. So then The Dark Knight r- Rises. Okay. If you let me have Birds of Prey above Wonder Woman, I'll allow these two above Shazam. See, I like our list system because it's a negotiation tactic. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, like, we give, each, no we give each other stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we, give, we give each other pieces. We're like, we're not quite fully satisfied, but like, we understand how we got here. It's compromise. <laughs> <laughs> 
I, I feel like there was a joke about that in the Star Trek show recently. Where it's like, yeah, this it's a game called Compromise, where we both go for a negotiation, and by the end, when no one's happy, we've come to a compromise. We win! <laughs> oh. uh, that's exactly how... Th this is how these lists work, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Occasionally, I'll put my foot down and be like, this cannot be any other way. Um, but... <laughs> um, Overall, it's it's a negotiation tactic at this point. It's like, there are a lot of things that me and Steven will agree on, like the fact that the Batman has to be number one on this list, like, without a doubt. And yeah. I do like this list more now that we're just putting DC movies on here. Like, mm -hmm. I can, I, my satisfaction rating on this list has just jumped dramatically. Uh, <laughs> despite, like, one of the movies I actually enjoyed being way lower on the list, um, there are movies on this list now that I'd actually enjoy watching. Um, Here's an idea that I have. Let me... Okay, okay, okay. Uh, we'll, we'll move that there. That's totally fine. Okay. Um, we will move both of these down. Okay. One. I'll let you have the other two wherever you want them. Then. So, well, here's the thing. I want to move these down. I'm having a really hard time doing this. Uh, you want me to do it? You want to move them down? Yeah, can you move those both down, please? There you go. Thank you. Okay. And then I also am thinking I'm going to move this one down. To five and then split it? Yeah. Okay. That works. I didn't read off the list before because this list is going to be changing quite a bit, by the way, folks. That's why. Because it, 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 it... Oh, no. What did I do there? Undo. Oh, did you move that? Okay, that's why it disappeared. I was like, <laughs> did I fuck that up? So we changed the list quite a bit. That's why I didn't read it off because it was it, the list was essentially going to change drastically compared to what it was. Um, there was no point reading the DCEU list anymore because it's no longer the DCEU list. It is the DC movies list. Which has 20 movies on it. How many movie list <sighs> have again? Oh, yeah. 34. <laughs> uh, did you are you showing that right now yeah i have them all on screen <laughs> okay did you show what's potentially below that yeah i saw the x and movies <laughs> there on the off hey i'm just ready to go okay i have that prepped to just start moving stuff over <laughs> oh no <laughs> that's gonna be a f see and i wouldn't worry about doing that that if we wanted to do that as a full marvel list of just mm -hmm. marvel movies I would do it during that week because we're already going to be adding a stupid amount of movies. You're that wrong. There's a lot of movies. <laughs> so, like, if there was a week to do it, there's a week to do it. Anyways, all right. The DC movie list. As it now stands with 20 films. Starting from number 20 and working our way up, we have at number 20, Catwoman. At number 19, Suicide Squad. Number 18, Justice League. Number 17, Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice, Ultimate Cut. Number 16, 101, 1984. Number 15, Teen Titans Go! to the movies. Number 14, Zack Snyder's Justice League. Number 12, Man of Steel. Number 12, tie. Oh, right. It's a tie now. Right. Yeah, I got to get used to reading this list. That threw you um, off there. <laughs> um, also tied for 12th is Superman. Uh, number 11, Joker. Number 10, Batman. Number 9, Aquaman. Number 8, Wonder Woman. Number 7, Birds of Prey and the Fantabulous Emancipation of One Harley Quinn. Number 6, Batman Begins. Number 5, Shazam! Number four, The Dark Knight Rises. Number three, The Dark Knight. Number two, The Suicide Squad. And number one, The Batman. And I will be fucking honest, there's probably a good chance that Batman movie will be there till the end of time. <laughs> it's a pretty damn good movie. Unless <laughs> like, we get a better sequel. That is legitimately my thought process right now is it, they're just, it just needs to be a better sequel. That's the only thing that topples the Batman at this point. <laughs> so... Good wow, list. we have we have that is a fun list now. Cause now now I can literally say like the top the top ten movies, literally half this list I would watch again. Mm -hmm. Um if not more now, because I I would rewatch Superman again at some point. I would rewatch Teen Titans Go to the Movies at some point. Um shit, you know, I would rewatch Joker potentially. Joker and Man of Steel aren't two that I'm fond of, but like, you know, I'll rewatch them. Zack Snyder's Justice League, you know, you, we all know my thoughts on it. Honestly, we could even add Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice, the theatrical cut on here at some point. I was thinking about the Justice League as well, but that's already on here. That's on there, yeah. Yeah, um, we could do that. We could do the regular cut of Dawn of Justice at some point because we do have the ultimate cut on there. Mm -hmm. I do feel like that is something that we could add to the list at some point. But the theatrical so, cut is so bad. 
It really is, which is saying <laughs> something that the uh, ultimate cut is at 17. <laughs> a 20 movie list and we know that the dot the regular cut is worse <laughs> uh, i mean it's still probably above suicide squad it's probably above justice league That's honestly just one do step we just above. Throw it, do we okay do we just throw it in now at just 18 uh, do we just do that now we don't even have to review it sure why not <laughs> we both i think we both agree on that right because Justice League was a bad movie. Yeah. Why not? I cool. I have no complaints. Cool. Let's just let's just remedy that real quick. <laughs> I am perfectly fine with it. Like, that, that way we don't have to sit through that movie again as well, is my thought process. <laughs> Alright, just a quick edit. We're just adding one movie, so. Uh, just gonna do. I'm I'm literally being so lazy. I'm just copying pasting, uh, <laughs> because I don't want to do it any other way at this point. Um, when did Dawn of Justice come out? That was 2016 as well. Okay. <sighs> and bam, man, really shows how those movies a like are <laughs> the fact that they're below fucking Superman 78. Yeah, I could live with this list. Damn you. Here we go. This is one hell of a list. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm we're heading back to the movie screen. Are All we right. are we ready to move on to spoilers? Um I think so. Okay. Let's do it. We're moving Ooh. on. Let's get ready to spoil <laughs> That was a good one. Not bad, yeah. So Holy shit, dude. Where do we start? It, so I kind of want to start with one thing that I've been wanting to talk about since the movie ended, and I haven't had the chance to because my family hasn't seen the movie yet. And I love the ending of this movie. I love the fact that the movie ends with Batman essentially failing. He's lost, but he's come with a moral victory, and it's a great character development, and that this movie is a character story more than it is an action film. That is by far, like, my favorite part of this movie, 100%. It's... Him being like, I could be a symbol of hope as well. Mm -hmm. I could strike fear into my enemies and hope to those who need. Yeah, especially Which because the so whole I am Batman. Yeah, with the I am Vengeance line thrown in his face by somebody who, like, was just a background character from earlier on in the movie. It's just so perfect because he just sees the parallels between him and the the people that he's inspiring to do this. It, even though he's not directly inspiring that person specifically, but he inspired Riddler, which that was where I want to jump to next, honestly, is our very first scene that we get with the Riddler when you get to see him inside the mansion house with, and he's like hidden in the shadows. And the only reason we see him is because the TV turns on. My first thought was, huh, that's just like Batman. Wait a second. <laughs> yeah. The fact that this bat also like we fought, like I, I didn't know how long this Batman was going to be in Batman. -y mm -hmm. And he's like year two is an awesome choice. In my opinion, like, great decision to make it a year two Batman because like he's established then, but he's not like prime Batman. Yet. Yeah. He's still um, learning. Yes. And like, we got like, we got that with like the fact that he's like, Holy shit. I can, I actually, I accidentally inspired people to be like this mm -hmm. because of my tactics of fear. Um, and we get that Batman. He realizes that he can also inspire hope. Yeah. And it's so fucking good at the end because he's like, yeah, no, I'm, I'm going to help people as well. Oh, God. Also, we got a little look at the bat cycle and it's campy as hell and I love it <laughs> Um, at the end. And just like, dude, like, I love that, like, the bat, like, the bat centerpiece is a blade. Is a blade. Yeah. It's actually usable. Like, it's a batarang. <laughs> I like that too. It's, it's all so, everything has its uses. The fact that his glove even has like electrical gun, like taser settings he's on got it, the, he, uh, which makes me wonder if he's fought the electrocutioner. Um, 
So he's got those like his. I love how the grapple hook works in this movie. Mm. That it comes from in he, like right here on the wrist. So he doesn't have to go. For, he doesn't have to use a utility belt in it. It's, a, it's on his wrist. Like it just utility gauntlets, they, man. <laughs> I mean, that's a good. That's a good choice in my opinion because it's just it extends out and it would make sense that like then you have the levy system like like in your like it, it pulls through here. Yeah. Then. Um, which honestly would give you more support and stuff. Um, like if it has like a system that like kind of like you can lock your arms in, so you don't have to like hold it like this. It like locks like, uh, like. A I think egg. we're just speculating at this point, but oh, hundred percent. But it, like, it makes more sense to me. Mm -hmm. Um. Also, the glide scene was fucking awesome. I thought that was cool. Instead of just like using his cape, it turns into a wingsuit. Like right, yeah, that was by far just interesting, and I love like it's so well thought out. It's, it's like wow, I wouldn't have expected that. That wow, <laughs> but then the landing that he has is oh, ow, oh, fucking hurts. Yeah, <laughs> like he hits a bus and then bounces off of it and fucking he smashes hits the bridge him. above. Yeah. Oh man. <laughs> no, thank you. I saw people come. I, I saw people complaining that this doesn't have like comedy in it. I, I like, yeah, I didn't really enter into this movie expecting comedy though. For one, right? like why does oh, Batman have to that? be funny? And two, there was some pretty good jokes in here. There's, there's a lot of dry humor in this movie that I oh, enjoy. Yeah, 100%. A lot <laughs> of dry humor. This is like, this is like, dude, hundred percent. Like the people complain that is not like funny. I'm like, bro. Okay, this this is what you all have asked for from DC to be dark and brooding, mm -hmm. and like you got the Snyder version of that, which was not enjoyable <laughs> because a he did it with Superman, and b then we got a Batman who just marks people as our modern Batman. Genuinely, doesn't work for a modern Batman take. But it was this a freshly, he just freshly lost his Robin and he's in distress and he's at his lowest low in his life. I still don't give a shit. It's <laughs> not a fun Batman. Um, This Batman, like, dude, like, I, like the dry humor scene. My favorite joke in the movie is them going into the uh, orphanage and Batman going, no guns. That's mm. your rule, not mine. Mm. <laughs> I'm like. Damn, Gordon, step back, bro. Step back. Yeah, I like the visual gag where <laughs> they had Cobblepot all wrapped up, and he's forced to waddling. Yeah, and he starts waddling. Like, are you gonna get me out of here? <laughs> yeah, that's see, that's funny too, and it's like it's supposed to be funny, but it's not like in your face, ha ha, funny. It's mm -hmm. like it's subtle humor that works in this story so well, and that makes me also. I would love to see this this Batman meet a Superman. Mm -hmm. That is like like comic book Superman. This just beaming, glowing, like altruistic, just <laughs> Boy Scouts. I want that to happen. You have no idea because this is the most brooding Batman we have ever gotten, and it's but it's not in an annoying way. Mm -hmm. It's literally because it's so comic accurate that it feels like a Batman brood sesh, <laughs> like. It just works. This this makes me want like the Batman Superman animated series crossover. Okay, give me it. Give yeah. me it on the live action, please. <laughs> give me a Henry Cavill Superman who can like be Superman. It's like it was just it was just fun. It really was, oh, and really especially was. too one of my things. Like I said, he lost in the end. He ultimately failed to save Gotham, and I like that in the parallel that he also wasn't. A super great detective, like he's great at figuring things out, yes, and smart and quick and figuring out riddles. But he's still not a perfect detective yet either. Like he doesn't yeah. know everything about everything. He's not able to find out what the ultimate end game plan was. And there was one other thing that came, and the fact that he didn't even know the correct pronunciation in Spanish of what he was looking for. Yeah, yeah, like, that was one of those things where like they like. <laughs> when that happened, when when they put it together, that like who the like who the rat is, the flying rat. Mm -hmm. I'm like, damn, that's good. Uh, you got a little bit of something right. Ah, oh, tissue paper. Gosh darn it! Get off my face, tissue. 
There we go. <laughs> um, and then, uh, like, the fact that, like, all, and, and the other dry humor. Dude, thumb drive. Oh. All I got to say is thumb drive. That was, that was fucking gold. Yeah, I laughed. I was the only one who laughed in my theater, too. It's like, really? I that was funny. Her- oh, it was funny. I didn't laugh because, like, the movie was so enthralling. Like, dude, I didn't even go to VIP for this. I just went to the earliest showing I could on Saturday at 1.30. Mm-hmm. And there were, like, there there were, like, teenagers and, like, young, like older kids there. So I was, like, at first kind of a little worried that I was going to have to deal with that. Mm-hmm. But, dude, as soon as the movie started, like, they, they didn't say a fucking peep. The only interruption we had the entire movie was someone's phone started ringing and it was playing the Avengers theme, which was actually kind of funny. <laughs> that is kind of funny. <laughs> like, also, we just heard, Dad. <laughs> and we're just, it just starts playing, and I'm like, damn, that's, that's funny. That's that's a golden bit right there. Like, you can't make that shit up. Um, But, like, dude, it's just, god damn it. Oh. So much of this movie is so good because, like, it like people not getting the comedy of it. I'm like, dude, that is thumb drive is hilarious. Mm-hmm. Like, that is definitively like honestly, it's a thing that I would bring into GTA RP if I could. Being like, it's if I if I if there was thumb drives that we can give people, mm-hmm. I would literally like it, it was like someone I was fighting against. I would take their thumb, attach it to a thumb drive, and be like, hey, guess what? Here you go. Here's your thumb drive. You're a sick mother. <laughs> yes. Yes, I am. <laughs> I'm a but, sick piece of shit. Mm-hmm. But this was still a lot of fun. Oh, God, yeah. God damn. Like, it's just, it's so goddamn good. I don't know how else to put it. Like, it's just, it's shocking how, like, how well they nailed it. Like, honestly, I'm, like, it is... <laughs> crazy how much that like internal monologue that we get really does make you feel like this is a Batman story. Like him, like hearing his thought process of what's going on. It, it It's crazy how much that impacts the story. And it feels so natural too. There are some right? moments where you're just listening to it and you're like, wait, this is a thought. He's not talking. Wow. Okay. Interesting. Wow. <laughs> yeah. And it makes sense contextually because he's writing it down in his like um in his, his journal, journal for in, his, in the Gotham Project journal. Um Which is just and, shows like, the more parallels between him and his counterpart of freaking the Riddler. Yeah. Of journals Which, that they're writing in. Damn, dude. I just I the amount of like the Riddler stuff in this was good too. Like it was puzzling and stuff, but also really well done. I almost wanted our Riddler to look even more like dorky geeky, like almost like 1990s era, like pocket protector and braces and thick glasses only because the first segment that we get to see with them, because I knew immediately in the very opening segment when it was, when we were seeing through the binoculars into the room, just based off of the breathing, I was like, that's not Batman. And based off of the breathing, how he was so wheezy, I was like, He's probably like an asthmatic too, so I'm expecting to see an inhaler. But no, I like, but no, it's it was just still his mask. Yeah, it was still great. It was still a good Riddler, but I wanted like, I wanted the expectations to be even further. Like, how could this super like dweeby person end up being this super psychotic murderer? Yeah, I liked the though. Like, dude, our introduction to Riddler when like we get that shot, we're like. He's all of a sudden behind the mayor. Mm-hmm. That was so fucking good. And then he uses he uses that weapon because mm-hmm. he's thought so many steps ahead. Like I want Batman to know that I have a plan. Yeah, like literally, and the fact that Batman doesn't know what that is, and then literally the cop that's been in this movie this entire time, who's slowly kind of gotten a bomb. I love that d- dynamic, by the way, with that cop. That mm-hmm. it like it's a slow burn bond that they've gotten officer martinez with played by uh gil perez abraham um who i like i liked how that like relationship kind of um builds Mm -hmm. throughout this movie and like he goes yeah no my my uh i think he said his brother was a carpenter or like one of his family members a carpenter like uncle or cousin or yeah and i'm like and 
brute like Batman suddenly realizing what he has in his hand and what he realizes what is actually up here and he's like fuck fuck and like Martinez being like oh shit <laughs> after Batman reveals it and he's like oh fuck too <laughs> like those <laughs> I would lo- I love that I love that I want more Martinez in the uh, Gordon show please um have those two working together um going to get a reboot of Gotham by Diz or by Warner <laughs> I mean, if they're doing it this way, I'm okay with it. If we're going to get this version of Gordon, I'm I'm okay with that, okay? Because we also have an established Batman then, um, which is kind of cool. Um, and we don't have some... We don't have to introduce all of Batman's villains um, when he's like a kid. <laughs> yeah, that's a little weird about Gotham. <laughs> it's like kid looney tunes it's like well we've known everybody for years but at least with kid looney tunes it makes sense on some level or like scooby the, the pup named scooby doo or shit like that like hmm. it shit was, like that like it's the it's the skeleton ghost and then 30 years yeah. later oh it's a skeleton ghost <laughs> um it just i think it works more naturally once Batman's in the picture. Um, so, like, that way we could get introduced to killers like Zaz and, like, Calendar Man in that show. And, like, when, like, we visit Arkham at some point, we just see them in their cells. Mm-hmm. Which I'm perfectly fine with. Um, I'm, I am okay with us going that route with it. Eventually um, we're going to see this Pattinson walk in and we'll have him be next to Idris Elbra and Will Smith and Harley Quinn. <laughs> but and then uh, assault on Arkham, sure. Movie? Let's fucking do it. <laughs> I'm in. Says okay, we can talk about it too. Who um, who um, uh, Barry uh, Conahag uh plays? Yes, or who we assume he plays? I mean, who else is he? <laughs> with that fucking scene right there. Yeah, he's definitely the Joker. Didn't necessarily expect that my question is like what kind of which joker do you think he is is this like a joker that the batman's already faced before or is yes. this kind of like why he's in arkham or like because th- there is a storyline i remember which i could see them probably pulling off of in the future which was the the i think it was the dark knight story where batman comes back as a really old man and, and the joker reactivates yeah from inside prison yeah, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, I could kind of see that being the story in this instance. So. Eh, not necessarily for me because it feel it seems like he's like it, from what it sounds like he's already fought Batman, from how they kind of talked about it, mm-hmm. um, and how he kind of is manipulating Riddler in that scene a little bit. Um, it seems like we might be getting the because like there's three types of Joker, right? You've got the criminal which is kind of the Jack Nicholson one. You have the clown, which is the, uh, what, what is his name? Um, the original Joker, uh, Caesar. Um, I know who you're talking about. I just can't remember his name right now. Fuck. But it does. His name doesn't matter in the context. (laughs) Um, who plays that, uh, like original Joker style, the, or the silver age Joker. Mm -hmm. Um, and then you have the, 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 the crazy one, um, which is more what Heath Ledger's is, mm-hmm. um, where they're unhinged, but like the the anarchy one, um, I can see us getting an anarchy one, which is my preferred one because it kind of like this Batman is definitely the Bronze Age Batman, modern. This is a modern age Batman, absolutely, because um, he has the rules, he has the like. Like, it's a modern age Batman. That's the best way to put it. So I feel like the best way to add to the Joker is we get the the uh, chaotic Joker. The clown of chaos. The clown prince of chaos. Let me, let me make sure I say yeah. that right. <laughs> I wanted to say the clown prince of crime, but if he's, he's not a crime boss if he's just chaos. I mean, he's kind of... He is a clown, a clown prince of crime, but like... If we're going for the, the one I think, then let's go with chaos, dude. I want the chaotic Joker, which like you can't predict. 
But fun fact, have you seen any of the information about like the website that was related to this movie? <coughs> no, I have not. So the website that Batman goes to in the movie is a real life website that you can go to that was helping. Is that the one that flashed at the end? Yes, exactly. Okay. So you can go to that website and then there's a bunch of uh, riddles that the Riddler will ask you still (laughs) and you can answer them. And then eventually you'll get the same video file that was encrypted, but it's the video file from the orphanage that was playing on the big screen of uh, Thomas Wayne announcing his mayoral running ship yes but it's talking about like how there's gonna be more and is this really beginning of the story or the end or all that fun really stuff oh speaking of like speaking of wayne um dude that entire scene where riddler keeps saying bruce wayne oh yeah and he's like oh man he's figured me out no he hasn't uh-huh. That was so good, though, because, like, if you, if you know the comics, Riddler figures out who Batman is. Yeah. But, like, the reason why Riddler will never say is because he's the fucking Riddler, and he's a dumbass, and will put it into a riddle. Mm-hmm. That, guess what? Guess who's the only one who's going to be able to fucking solve the riddle? Batman. Batman. <laughs> guess what? And he already <laughs> knows who Bruce Wayne is. Oh, wait. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Duh. Like... <laughs> and that's literally what Batman tells the Riddler at the end of Hush. He's like, you're not going to tell anyone, though. Like, yeah, why is that, Batman? Because you can't just tell someone the answer. you got to make it a puzzle. <laughs> and like, we're just like, you got me there, Batman. Yeah, that's so comic book. <laughs> <laughs> Like I could do this like it's, once. It's that it's that meme right there. The You got me there. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So yeah. So like me during that entire scene, I'm like, oh, he's already, he's figured it out. That makes that I I because like, and I play with my expectations. The moment he said Bruce Wayne, I'm like, oh fuck, he's figured it out. He knows. He knows. Um, it was definitely a great twist there. Yeah, and then the revealing that he doesn't. I'm like, oh, that, that mm-hmm. you had me. Good job. Good job, movie. Or does yeah. he know? <laughs> who knows we still got other movies hopefully mm, we've got time to figure it out I'm trying to think if there's oh. anything else I want to talk about in this movie and the only other thing that I could think of is that damn car chase holy shit like someone I heard someone say they felt it was too long my god no. I could watch that forever that was by far one of the best car chases I've ever seen in the movies oh my god <laughs> Ooh, it's so intimate and i love the perspective changes too where you see it from multiple perspectives and multiple shifts and even literally through the eyes of cobblepot as he's hanging upside down and just sees the boots walking towards him through the flames like oh my god that's so cool <laughs> and then when we see the batman's head like poke down mm-hmm. and then we get the flip perspective where he looks right side up because batman's looking at him that way mm-hmm Oh, God, that's some great fucking cinematography right there. I fucking love it. Dude, like, seeing the Batmobile come out of the flames. Yes, just (laughs) roaring through the flames after he's like, I've got you. I've got you. Oh, it's so cool. Oh. I'm going to watch this movie again, (laughs) obviously. God, I wish we lived near each other because this would be so fun to go see together. (laughs) Genuinely. Uh next time best dc movie to date hands down no questions asked agreed nine and a half out of nine point five out of ten. <laughs> ten out of ten for me which puts it out of ten overall so like god damn so uh, anything else no we can uh probably move on to uh movie news or like news in general Woo, news news <laughs> Uh, so, news, important stuff. Oh, we want trailer drop today. That's true. Did you watch it? I did not. Looks like it could be the good one. Uh, I, after what I felt was disappointing from Book of Boba Fett, my only fucking problem is that we are still going to have to put up with God knows how many episodes on goddamn motherfucking. Tatooine. All that Dune hype, man. 
I just, why do we keep going back? There's nothing there. Like, we, we, we tried. They wanted to, we, we got some Tusken Raider stuff and then dropped it. Like, mm -hmm. the shit that would be interesting on Tatooine, we decided to drop halfway through a season so we could get two episodes of Mandalorian in. Isn't it fun? No, this is. But it does look energetic. It looks. It looks cool. There's some um good old uh uh what are they the uh inquisitors. Oh really? Um, yeah, it looks like we're gonna be dealing with inquisitors. <laughs> and also the the little bit of a uh, duel of uh, fates played too. Slash Jewel of, uh, Jewel of Heroes. You know, the song. Oh, yeah, I know what you're talking about. I was looking at something else here. Sorry. Yeah, like the most iconic song. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Allergies hit me. Actually, why isn't there, like... Why isn't there a Duel of Fate slash uh, the Star Wars theme song? Can't have too much of a good thing. That's why. That actually, why the fuck haven't they done that yet? That would be so good. God, why didn't we get the Duel of Fates movie? <laughs> Oh. You know? Yes. No. Fuck. Maybe. Why did we get Rise of Skywalker? <laughs> <laughs> because reasons. <sighs> oh. So there there um have you seen did you see the information about uh Black Adam and stuff coming out soon? Well not soon, but uh no, what did I miss? I think trailers they're... coming soon? I think so. Cool, because I can't wait for a trailer for that to see if I'm going to enjoy it or not. Genuinely, I feel like with DC movies so far, if I don't care for the trailer that much, I don't think I've enjoyed the movie, right? I feel like that's kind of been my, like... I feel like my takes have been pretty consistent with that so far with the trailers. There's a cat in your room now. Yes, she managed to open the door. Come here, Kitty. You will be on camera. If you're going to be in here, you are on camera. <laughs> um, I feel like that that has been a pretty consistent take for me so far is that if I judge like from my judging of a trailer I feel like we've both kind of come to the same realization on the movie like why well, I don't watch trailers anymore <laughs> well, that's fair but I feel like it like I'm usually pretty correct on like whether or not I'm gonna like the DC movie mm -hmm. and mind you and this is me going into movies with like j throwing an expectation at the door right outside of like Outside of, like, expectation from, like, comics and stuff like that, right? Um, but, like, I'm talking from just, like, taking my trailer expectations out. Um, I can usually pretty much do at the door. Now, Batman, there was no chance because I was so fucking hyped and it lived up to it and then some. Um, but, yeah, like, I mean, I feel like since we started doing the show, whenever I see the trailer for the movie, I've been kind of, like, I've been able to judge if I'm going to enjoy that on this list so far. Mm hmm and that's why I'm looking forward to seeing the Black Adam trailer and the uh, Shazam trailer to see if I'm going to like those. Because so far, like, Flash point trailer that we saw, which is, wasn't even a trailer. It wasn't a full trailer. It was just, like, a snippet, right, yeah. Um, from the DC fandom. I When I saw it, I'm like, <sighs> I don't know. Like, Michael Keaton, Batman but I don't know if we're ready for Flashpoint movie. Yeah, you got to not. Hail Marys, man. Go all in all the time. Best thing starting off the bat. Uh-huh. <laughs> <sighs> Let's see. Um, other news type things to talk about. In case you didn't know, they're making a sequel to The Meg. That's happening? That's happening. It's not coming out this year, but it's coming out next year. So are we going to watch Deep Blue Sea 2 with that, since we watched Deep Blue Sea 1 with the first one? I mean, why not? 
Or do we watch Jaws and finally bite that bullet? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe we watch all three. Then we'd have to watch the other two Jaws as event. Well, then Tornadoes. we watch. Tornadoes. There we go. Uh, no. <laughs> no. no. I will only allow Sharknado 2 if we get a crawl 2. So I'll knock on wood that we don't get a crawl 2. I mean, hell, there's like six Sharknadoes at this point. There's seven, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Gotta watch them all. No. No, we do not. We really do not. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the shark list. <laughs> <laughs> shark movie list. Uh, then we'd have to do avalanche sharks. And I think there's Shark Boy and Lava Girl. <laughs> Fucking hell. No, that, that doesn't count. <laughs> and then what about the Shark Boy and Lava Girl sequel movie? And the sequel movie to that movie? Yeah, wait, there's a sequel to the f sequel? I think so. I think they're planning it out. Bleh. Because the sequel Bleh. was so successful. Was it in a Netflix only movie? <laughs> I'm pretty sure, yeah. Oh. <laughs> okay. That's how that's how we count our success now. Cool. Glad we're at that point. <sighs> yeah, I ain't got any other news, by the way. Um, Outside of uh, Massive Talent released another trailer and it looks really fucking funny. I haven't seen the trailer yet. Oh, there's going to be a Pinocchio remake with Tom Hanks on Disney+. Plus. Yay. <laughs> More live action well, I Disney. saw something else Sony related. Hold on. Maybe. Uh, Star Trek Picard. That came out last week. Started last week. Nice. Yeah, it's a good series so far. The the season two uh, release was pretty nice. Oh, uh, okay. So Sony's reportedly looking to bring God of War show to Amazon uh, to to someone. Okay. Also, State of Play. Maybe Sly Cooper might be at State of Play from what people are talking about. And like, oh, likely to miss. Never mind. Sly Cooper, God of War, and Infamous likely to miss tomorrow. State of Play. Damn would have loved dude could you imagine another infamous so i just there's uh i see an article from the ninth which was today from variety saying that aquaman 2 and flash to be delayed to 2023 and shazam 2 moves to christmas 2022 Did you say black adam and flash aquaman 2 and flash so we're still getting Black Adam and Shazam this year, then? It says here, Aquaman, The Lost Kingdom, and The Flash are being pushed from 2022 to 2023 uh, due to COVID delays. Um, the Momoa starring sequel is being pushed back from December 16th to March 17th. While the Ezra Man, Miller... DC really just can't stick to their schedule ever. And then Ezra like... Miller's first solo outing is The Flash is being pushed... From uh, November 4th to June 23rd. How long has Ezra Miller had to wait on the sidelines for his movie? You want to know how long? Since oh. 2016. Hang on. Here we go. Um, Dwayne Johnson's Black Adam movie is being pushed back three months to October 21st of 2022. All Harold Marvel. <laughs> May they Super Pets. Supreme. Oh, yeah, that comes out this year, too. With Dwayne Johnson in it, too. Yeah, it comes out May 20th, 2022. And then Shazam has been pushed forward to um, December 12th. And what, Monster? Um, no, it's... uh, <laughs> Yeah, it's just going to be another year for Marvel at this point. Like, No, man, next I... year is going to be the year for Marvel by the look of it. Every year. Oh no. Monster, get hydration and get um electrolytes. Water and electrolytes. That is all you will drink until you are recovered. Trust me. <laughs> so no more if, soda. If to <laughs> yeah, pretty much. That's how I was. I didn't drink any soda during it. I drank like one bottle of soda. Like the entire time. The rest of the time was just Gatorade and water. Um, yeah, I mean, like, let's be real. It's fucking Marvel owns the superhero genre at this point. Like, 
Oh, oh, I saw something cool. Uh, apparently in Shang Chi, we were supposed to get Deadpool in the, the cage fight. Oh yeah, I heard about that. It was supposed to be a cameo that didn't come out in time or something. God, that would have been fucking awesome. Because guess what? That would have mean that we would have had to tie all this shit in already. <laughs> <sighs> oh, thank you. Let's see, I'm trying to see if there's anything else. Yeah, so yeah, the Penguin series is with Colin Farrell is going to be going straight to HBO Max. Uh, let's see. I think that's pretty much it for me here. Okay. Except for next week's movies. Which, whoop. No, monsters aren't soda's monster. They're honestly worse. Yes. <laughs> Which next week is our uh, our Netflix week. Our Netflix Ryan Reynolds week. As this week, Adam Project dropped, so we are doing um, Red Notice and the Adam Project. We're finally getting back to doing Red Notice because we that was the one week we missed last year. Yep, bad times, but somehow it was very convenient for us because <laughs> we were gonna do this movie with another movie with Ryan Reynolds and Gal Gadot. That was another like thriller movie, but um, we decided against it because of reasons, life, which suck. Yeah. Anything else? Any last calls? Uh no, I think. Huh? I think that's everything. Do I need the vamp for you so you can come up with some catchy outro at all, or do you think you're set? I mean All I gotta say is, you know, like I really enjoy you start doing the outro. Okay. So yeah. Thanks for watching everybody. Like, comment, subscribe, ring a bell, leave a review, uh, all that fun stuff. And uh, we'll see you next week. Huge thank you to our sponsors, Aviation Gin and Mint Mobile, um, for sponsoring this week and next week's shows. Um, Because <laughs> those are totally the brands of the stars. Uh huh. Yeah, I mean, those are Ryan Reynolds' brands, so he owns both those. <laughs> Actually, you know what? Uh, I bet you if we could get a sponsorship, it would be from him. Uh, probably. Hell, I'll sign up to Mint Mobile if I get service out here. And a better phone. And hell, he's best friends with Dwayne The Rock Johnson. We can get a sponsorship with his alcohol that he serves, which is tequila, which I love. So. <laughs> Jin's not the worst. Jin's okay. Not sure I drink it commonly, but if it tastes good, sure, why not? But yeah, so yeah, we'll see you guys later where we are not sponsored. And uh yeah, talk to you later. See you on our next episode of uh our sponsored show by Ronald Reynolds. Um I am Ronald Reynolds. I just uh, play string characters. No, I really don't, but like, you know. Do I?